does. Looking better. Okay, he's working on it. So if you guys can still hear us, we're going to keep chatting. Uh, one, we just wanted to give a quick out at two when we're on the topic of consumers. So um, as a Canadian, I know this great department store Simons. Many of you probably know Simons as well. Simons is running um, this polar line this winter and fall, which is pretty exciting. So $5 from every piece goes to Polar Bears International. Again, not saying you need to go buy this stuff, but it's a cool way to support um, organizations like ours to do these sorts of things where you make uh, some sort of product and have proceeds give back. So I have been wearing some really fun polar bear and CA inspired clothing up here. And if anyone notices it, we'll have to take some photos. I am really enjoying. I have um, a pair of sea ice tights that are my new favorite. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So we are going to slowly start wrapping up here with a couple more questions and a couple more good news stories. Uh, we did get a question about that drone that we talked about last year. Uh, so that was a project between, uh, well, through the San Diego Zoo, who was working with a partner to try to test that large drone out that was super cool. My understanding is they're still working to see whether that can be an option, but they will not be back this year right now. Using these sorts of really neat non-invasive technologies is really exciting. Uh, we do have a ways to go. It's hard to operate technology in the Arctic, as many of you who follow us know. Very cold. Wind is just crazy up here, and that's very hard on drones, of course. Uh, so there's still a lot of work to be done, but it's pretty neat that people are looking at different options. So if we do learn more about that, or we see some drones up here again for the purpose of studying polar bears, we can let you know. Uh, another good news story, just wanted to give a quick shout out to one of our partner groups, the Hogel Zoo. So they have a polar bear challenge right now. Uh, they are in Utah. So if you do live in Utah, this could be a cool option for you. So the polar bear challenge is a 21 day long competition that gives your class the chance to reduce energy consumption and all participating schools will be part of a healthier planet and receive recognition on the website. So check it out. I believe you have a few different options of how to reduce your energy consumption. Again, this is a way that you can work together as a community, as a school, and make bigger change all together. So it's not all on one person's shoulders. It's just shifting that needle to do things together. So check out that. I'll post a link to Utah's Polar Bear Challenge if anyone is interested. And Utah Hogel Zoo is our partner on the Spotter RF project that we've talked to you all about a couple times. And we can briefly touch on the Spotter again. We will have more opportunities to discuss it more in depth. So that is the compact surveillance radar system that's mounted on the Tundra Buggy Lodge out here in the Tundra, monitoring polar bear movements. So we are in a testing phase. Pretty exciting. And thanks so much to Utah Hogel Zoo for supporting that work. And we even have a group of folks visiting uh, today to check that out and to yeah connect to the Tundra and to polar bears. So BJ, are you still handling the stream or can we talk to you for two shakes? Okay, thumbs up. That's good. So if you wanted to add anything on the spotter, go for it. I was going to ask you that. And then also if you could give a brief update about the PBI house being built in Churchill. Sure. So the uh, spotter RF project is, is, uh, is one I'm really excited about. It's what you might think of as a polar bear radar. Um, it's a bit of hardware that's been mounted on the Tundra Buggy Lodge, which of course is in the middle of polar bear habitat. And it's made up of four plastic panels, almost the size of about uh, an iPad each. And these are mounted on the exterior walls and they're facing outward. And uh, they talk to a camera. And if the iPad sized plastic panels sense movement out in space, then it'll slew the camera focus the camera on whatever is moving out there and our hopes and what we've seen with this thing is that it's really good at picking up polar bears and what we hope to is we we hope to prove this thing could work as a almost like an early warning system for polar bears for places maybe like uh, northern communities or uh, camps or cabins or whatever places where there are people uh, with polar bears 
Um, what this could do, though, is help alert the, the occupants of whatever the, the device is mounted to that there could be a polar bear in the area. Um, so, like I said, we're in the testing phase. It's a really neat project. Um, you know, it's kind of this, uh, this super fun, you know, kind of new technology stuff that um, overlays video, live video with uh, Google Maps. And uh, so it's, it's, it's very neat. Um, it's been, been working really well. So, again, thanks to Hogle Zoo for the funding on that. Um, Polar Bears International also has a, a huge project going on right downtown Churchill, Manitoba. So not far from where we are, about 20 kilometers from where we are in the buggy here. In the main town center, PBI is building a house. And this is a two-story structure. Downstairs, we're going to have an open space where we could give public talks. Um, as well as um, uh, information on the walls that talk about polar bears and the western Hudson Bay and, and what's, what's happening with climate change. So a neat teaching space that we have downstairs. And then upstairs we're going to have uh, a few places for staff to stay, so four bedrooms. It's a really, uh, really neat looking structure. Um, and that should be fully functional by sometime next year. So um, a lot of a lot of exciting things happening here from Churchill. Thanks, BJ. Those are very exciting things. We are so stoked to bring more of that stuff to you by next year. Those things will be buttoned up even further. Uh, so we will start winding down now. We've seen lots of great questions. Uh, I am hopping in the comments here and answering you. Um, but if I missed any, please do let me know. And you guys are just so great at pulling out questions that I missed if I did. But we do want to thank you uh, for joining us today on November 6th, which for many of you is a major voting day. I do want to give one more good news story in a different way, but many of you have been waiting for this one. We will be joined by Ranger Mike Fitz in Churchill in the next few days, which we are so excited about and we know that you are too. So Mike is currently in Winnipeg. He and I spoke this morning. We do have a rough itinerary for him while he's in Churchill. He is going to be doing a mix of interviews and activities both on the tundra and in town. We are currently having to nail down a few specific times uh, with different interviewees. So thank you so much for your patience with that. I know you're antsy that no one wants to miss Mike. But Mike will also be hopefully doing some more impromptu stuff, especially when he's on the buggy and he's surrounded by polar bears and he can do something on Instagram or be chatting with whoever happens to be on the buggy with him that day. So he will be with us for, I think it's nine or 10 days at least. And we're gonna have lots of fantastic opportunities to chat with Mike and hear his perspective and help him learn about polar bears. So we are just really looking forward to seeing him here. It's gonna be great. And as soon as we nail anything down, we'll pop it in the schedule for you so no one misses it. And we'll also make sure that it lives online in case you can't watch something live. Fantastic. So as we start to wrap up, I wanted to just pass this over to Steve for any parting comments on this voting day, on a day that people can take some power into their own hands. Voting gives us a voice in our shared future with polar bears. Maybe some last inspiring words. It's easy uh, to uh, think, well, you know, polar bears are faced with this giant challenge of uh, global warming and the sea ice loss. And it is a major challenge, but I think today we have some real important things to celebrate. We have the, the uh, important advances that Polar Bears International is making, both on a research and a management front and a conservation front. And we're really excited about our opportunity to have a new home and interpretive center right on Main Street in Churchill. And we're also extremely excited about the advances in trying to tackle the challenge of CO2 in our atmosphere that the Canadian government is taking. You know, two-thirds of the world's polar bears live in Canada. Of course, people all around the world and the things that they do are what are creating the challenges for polar bears. But for Canada to step forward and say, we want to take these actions and we know that one of the things they're going to do is to save polar bears 
is a really important and optimistic thing. So especially when we're talking here on Election Day in the United States, it's really important to celebrate these kinds of advances in society. And these kinds of steps forward are the kinds of steps that everybody needs to make in all nations around the world. So we've got a lot of things that are on our plate as far as what we need to do to save polar bears, but we've also got hope and excitement going forward that we will accomplish that. And um, we all need the courage that the Canadian government is showing to really step out and say, by golly, we are going to do this. So celebrate that. It's a great day. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again next time. So back to Elisa. Beautifully said, as always. Thank you so much, Steve. And thank you all for joining us today, this Tuesday afternoon. So if you haven't got out and voted already, please do. Or wherever you live in the world, please check out some of the links that we posted today and see how you can get involved. Uh, please also post photos of your actions on Instagram or Facebook. And you can use the hashtag Save Our Sea Ice or tag Polar Bears International, wherever you may be. We would love to highlight what you are doing and help uh, spread these positive stories and inspire these community actions so uh, this was our only official live chat this week but for the next couple days we will be joined by discovery education and we are going to have a couple very fun webcasts one tomorrow wednesday at noon central or 10 a.m pacific and one at 11 30 a.m on thursday that's 11.30 a.m. Central Time, and both were, will be broadly themed as Polar Bear Basics, with the Wednesday one being aimed at younger kids, and the Thursday one being aimed at older kids, but I think they're going to be pretty enjoyable for anyone who watches. We're going to have a lot of fun, and as always, we will be on the Tundra, so if there's something cool going on, we're going to plug in our microphone and chat with you, and we will stay engaged in the comment section and keep answering your questions and make sure you know everything that you want to know about polar bears. So I see that you guys are posting very cool pictures of the lodge cam. So I think that buggy one is going to trundle over there once we wrap up here. So that's exciting. Keep an eye on this tundra buggy cam. We'll go see some polar bear action and we will stay in touch. So thanks again and we'll sign off from the tundra for now. Talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>